I'm Wayne Bailey. I'm an extension entomologist with the University of Missouri, responsible for field and forage crop insects. And today we're in an alfalfa field in central Missouri where we have two problems. We have a P. aphid problem in the alfalfa and also an alfalfa weevil problem. And so we're going to be sampling for both using the bucket method. And then later we'll do some sweeps to, to show another method of sampling. And what we're doing is we have a white bucket. Roger's grabbing the top of the plant. He'll cup his hand over the top of the plant. The reason for that is we don't want to dislodge any of the alfalfa weevil larvae. And then he will go down and cut the stem off with a sharp knife. We'll do five stems at this location. We'll move and we'll do five different locations for a total of 25 stems. One thing you want to look at the size of the larvae, you want to look at the size of the alfalfa. And our thresholds are set up in that manner. But on six to 10 inch alfalfa, if we have one per stem, we're at threshold. At the same time, I will also be cutting some stems and we'll count the actual numbers of P aphids per stem. For that, we need, on this tall of alfalfa, uh, this is about uh, 10 inches tall, we would have to have 70 P aphids per stem to be at threshold. We also can tap those in the bucket and count the, the insects in the bucket themselves. You're looking at an alfalfa weevil larvae, probably a second or third instar. Uh, third worm stage, it goes through four worm stages before they turn into, they pupate and turn into adult beetles or weevils. We also have up to two or three hundred aphids in the bucket off the five stems we looked at. And uh, one of the reasons we include alfalfa weevils, one of our very important pests on alfalfa, is that it is a defoliator, and if the numbers of larvae are high enough, they can actually take all the leaf material off the plant, leaving only the stems. So unlike the aphid that has a piercing sucking mouth part and sucks plant juices, this one will chew on the foliage, and the foliage is where most of the protein content is located. So we end up with a field that is, is uh, what we call silvered, and it's where the, all the leaf material is gone, and we just had the remnants left of the leaf veins and they tend to turn kind of a, a silver brown. If we come in and cut that down to allow new growth and we still have an insect population present, then we need to treat that population because the, they will feed on the new tillers as they emerge from the soil. And when they do that, they hold back the growth of the alfalfa and the competitive nature of the alfalfa, allowing weeds to come in and often take out the stand. So in years where we have very severe alfalfa weevil populations, we not only have to look at the foliage itself uh, in the first cutting, but we also have to look at that regrowth after first cutting is removed from the field. On P. aphid, it tends to be more of a spring problem. Uh, for fir very first cutting, the P. aphid itself is one of the four aphids that we look for. Uh, P. aphid is our most common aphid in alfalfa, and it's one that uh, can suck enough plant juices from the plants to turn the plants yellow, and if it's a new stand, they can often cause mortality to those plants. This is a two-year-old stand, so we don't see the mortality, but we can see a yellowing of the field and a loss in, in again, quality of the alfalfa with very heavy numbers of P. aphids. Uh, there are numerous predators and parasites that help us with the pest insects. There are also just some transients that move through the field and will feed a little bit on the alfalfa or feed on some of the other vegetation in the field and do no harm to the alfalfa, or no economic loss comes from them. And so what we want to look for are uh, ladybird beetles, both the immatures and the larvae, which feed on, on uh, alfalfa weevil larvae and also feed on aphids and are, are pretty voracious. They can eat up to 50 aphids a day. And so if we have a population of those in the field, we would hesitate to spray simply because they can often take care of, a, of an aphid population and bring it down below the economic threshold level. And then we also can have a uh, little parasitic wasp, which will come along, sting the alfalfa weevil, or they can also can sting the pea aphids. This particular one will go and find an aphid, or find several aphids, and lay an egg into each one's body, uh, piercing through the skin of the aphid. The egg hatches inside the aphid into a worm stage, or a larva, and it feeds on the inside of the, of the aphid, killing the aphid and causing it to change its shape into more of a, a balloon type shape, which we refer to as an aphid mummy. And inside that mummy, then the worm will, will pupate and then emerge as a new wasp. And when it comes out, it will cut a hole in the, in the top of the shell 
and we'll have one little hole like a little porthole and out we'll crawl the wasp to go sting more aphids. Sweeping uh, of alfalfa is possible to scout for a potato leaf hopper. We do have some leaf hoppers present today. They're not potato leaf hopper, they're aster leaf hoppers. Uh, they don't feed on alfalfa, but they may feed on some of the weed species in the, f in the field. So uh, it's one of the insects that uh, is out here, doesn't cause much problem. As we go a little later in the season, starting about May 5th or 10th, someplace in that area, we will have potato leaf hoppers coming into the state from farther south from Louisiana, Yucatan Peninsula, other places in Mexico, and they can cause quite a bit of damage with their piercing sucking mouth parts. And they can actually kill stands of alfalfa if that numbers are high enough. The way we would, would scout for that particular insect is to take a 15 inch diameter sweep net and we're going to do pendulum sweeps and we'll do 10 pendulum sweeps at five locations in the field and see how many leaf hoppers we have. We have a ladybird beetle, one of our beneficials. We have parasitic wasps flying out of here, indicating that we do have parasitic wasps present that can feed on both the P aphids that are in the field and also on the alfalfa weevil. And then as we open this up, we have a mass of, uh, of alfalfa weevil larvae, very small ones. We have the nabid, which is one of the uh, aphid-eating insects. This is a clover stem borer, or clover leaf weevil adult that can cause problems in clover uh, sometimes in the larval stage. We also have an immature ladybug on this leaf right here. It's like a little alligator with, with uh, stripes on it. We actually have two of them. And they are aphid eating machines. So here's a small one, a little larger one, and then a very large one. There's probably a couple hundred larvae right there in those 10 sweeps. So we're about 10 times over threshold in this field is what we've calculated. Oh, he grabbed the aphid, didn't he? He crawled right up to it and grabbed it. He will consume that aphid in just a couple minutes. he just chomp right through it. But the beneficials are always here until we spray. But they'll come back about two weeks after the pest comes back. A lot of farmers will leave part of the field untreated just so that uh, they have a, a resource or a source area for the beneficials, yeah. For this particular field, if we were at 10th bloom, we'd early cut. We're not at that stage yet, and so they're going to spray this with uh, one of the pyrethroid insecticides that has a 14-day free re-entry or pre-harvest interval before we can cut it as hay. And uh, that should take out the alfalfa weevil population and also the pea aphid population and allow the plants that are still rather healthy and, and, and uh, have high quality protein to uh, be used as forage.